Hello and welcome to the lecture on comparison contrast, also known as compare and contrast. This is uh, basically going to introduce the concept of compare and contrast and also how you can write a paper in this form. So to get started here, let's take a look. So compare contrast. It, when you're looking thinking about comparing things, how are things alike? So if you look at this picture, you can say, well, how are these things alike? Well, they're both Looks like they're both young girls, they both have brown hair, they're both eating watermelon, looks like they're both wearing about the same kind of dress. Um, so there's a lot that's um, things that are the same about them, but are they exactly the same? No. She's got her eyes open, she has her eyes closed. Uh, she's actually physically biting on the uh, watermelon right now, she's got it just holding it. So there are some differences. So, But when you're looking at comparing things, you look at the things that are similar, that are the same. Whereas dealing with contrast, how are things different? Now, both of these are fruit, but they're not the same. So, one's orange, one's red. One's an apple, one's an orange. So, there are differences. So, compare contrast. You're looking at how things are the same and how things are different. Now, what's the point of even doing this? Well, very simple. It'll help you make choices. Compare contrast helps us make choices. We do this all the time, whether we realize it or not. Maybe not in a paper form, but in life, we do it all the time when we're trying to figure out usually what we're looking for, what we're trying to choose between two things, which one are we going to choose. It works well for doing the following. If you're trying to figure out if one thing is better than another. If you're trying to find that things that seem different are actually alike. So if you have someone says, well, that's completely different, you can use compare contrast and say, well, they're a lot more alike than you think. And then people say, oh, that's exactly the same. You can say, well, actually, they're a lot more different than you think. So it works in each of these categories, in each of these different ways is how you can use a compare and contrast. For example, if you're trying to figure out if you want to get an iPhone 5 for super cheap or if you want to spend some money to get an iPhone 6, you would do a compare and contrast. Okay, well, which one is better? What are the features? What do they have in common? What's different about them? Um, that's an example of what you would do. So, like, if you're doing one version of, the, you know, the iPhones are basically uh, very similar, but there are going to be some differences between the 5 and the 6. Or you can go even crazier and say, okay, well, should I get an Android phone or should I, I get an iPhone? Um, you know, so you can compare things that are quite a bit different um, to figure out which one you want. So those are examples of how you'd use compare contrast. Now, when using compare contrast, and now for something completely different, you have to make sure the subjects are somewhat alike. If you're going to compare two different things, which you will be doing, um, they need to be somewhat alike. For example, you wouldn't say, hey, number six, he is the best running back in college football. And you're like, really? Why do you say that? Well, because he can run faster than my niece, who's a seven-year-old girl. Okay, well, what? Okay, yeah, so he's a good football player, but if you're going to compare him, you wouldn't compare him to a seven-year-old girl who doesn't play college football. They need to be somewhat alike. You would have to compare him to another college football player. That's why they need to be somewhat the same when you're doing compare and contrast. Now, when using comparison and contrast, you make sure you stay focused. Stay focused on your purpose. Sometimes as we begin to write... We'll start writing and we will get all excited about the topic and we'll get off track and we will all of a sudden be writing something completely different. So you need to stay focused on your purpose. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Also, when using comparison contrast, you have to know your thesis and this is how you do it. Okay, You have to formulate a strong thesis. A thesis is just a big fancy word that basically says, what is this paper about? What am I comparing and contrasting and how am I doing it? So the first step to doing a great compare and contrast uh, paper is you need to formulate a strong thesis. Well, that's great. So now I know I have to do it, but how do I do it? Great question. A strong thesis statement includes the following. So again, if you're going to do compare and contrast, you need to include these following elements. Name the subjects that are being compared and contra contrasted. What are the two different things you're going to compare and contrast? You have to say what they are. Okay. You should indicate whether the essay focuses on their similarities, their differences, or both. If you're trying to say one is better than the other, you would say that. If you're trying to say one is actually more alike than you would think, you would say that. 
Uh, generally, for compare and contrast, people are trying to figure out which one is better than the other because they have to pick one over the other. So that's maybe the way to go. And last, you need to state the essay's main points in the comparison and contrast. Okay, so well, uh, that's a lot of stuff here. Okay, we'll break it down. Name the subjects being compared and contrast. You have to name the two things. Say, you know, well, how are we going to be, what are we doing here? Are we comparing them to make them one is better than the other? Are they more alike than similar? Are they more similar than alike? And then how are we going to compare them? Okay, now just bear with me as we go give you some examples here. An example of, uh, here's some examples of this, um, strong thesis statements. The Samsung Galaxy 5 is a better phone than the iPhone 6 based on battery life, processor speed, and the size of the video display. Okay, so what are we comparing and contrasting? The Samsung Galaxy S5 compared to the iPhone 6. So I'm naming two different things. There's one and there's two. What are we trying to do? We're trying to say that one is better than the other. It's just stating it. It's saying that this phone here is better than this phone. Okay, so our two different things. Our focus is the paper is to show that one is better than the other. We're just saying this one is better than the other. But why is it better? When you look at battery life, processor speed, and the size of the video display. So there's three things here that we're going to compare. Battery life, processor speed, and the size of the video display. Are you getting it? A thesis statement needs, again, have those three elements. The two things you're comparing, why are you comparing them, this one's showing is better, and at least three ways you're going to compare them or contrast them. Yeah. All right. Notice the three elements. Again, the items being compared contrasted. We talked about that. Which position is being taken? Da-da! And the way the items are being compared and contrasted. Battery life, processor speed, and the size of the video display. Three different ways. Okay. So what's wrong with this one? I am better than you. Why is that not a good thesis statement? Think about it for a second. Pause the video if you want to. Here's the answer. I am better than you. Is it comparing two things? Yes. I and you. Is it trying, what, what's, what is it trying to say? Well, it's trying to say it's better. So we've got two of the elements. But how am I better than you? I don't say. I'm missing those parts. Okay. Therefore, this is not a good thesis statement because it's got just two of the three elements. Yes, it's got the two things we're comparing. Yes, it's saying why we're doing. We're doing one is better than the other, but it doesn't give us three reasons why. So that is not good. Okay, what about this one? The Honda Accord has great gas mileage, an excellent fuel safety rating, and it retains its value over time. Okay, what's wrong with that as a thesis statement? Pause the video again if you want to, figure it out. All right, and here comes the answer. The answer is, well, we've got the Honda Accord, great. What is it being compared to? I don't know, we didn't say. We did say three things, great gas mileage, an excellent safety rating, and it retains its value, that's good but it's only got one element. What is it being compared to or contrasted to? I don't know. You need to have that. Okay, let's look at another one. JCC and NC State both offer classes in English, math, and science. Okay, is there anything wrong with this one? Maybe it's a trick question. Think about it, pause the video if you want, see if you can figure it out. Okay, pausing is over. Let's figure it out. What's wrong with this one? Well, let's see, we have the two things we're comparing and contrasting. And we have it in three different ways. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but are we saying one is better than the other? Are we saying they're more similar? Are they different? So it's kind of implied that they're similar, okay? But it doesn't really say. So you would say JCC and NC State are a lot more similar than people think because they both offer classes in English, math, and science. Right now, you're not really just comparing or contrasting. You're just saying they both have them, okay? So you need to be more specific and more clear about that. Okay, when using comparison and contrast, make sure that you select the best points to be discussed. Okay, if you're going to be comparing different things, make sure they're good points. Okay, and make sure that you organize the way you present your information. Let me go back to this other one for just a second. Select the best points. So if you're going to compare two cars, let's say the Honda Accord and the Toyota Corolla, and you say, well, the the Honda Accord is better than the Toyota Corolla because the Honda Accord, um, the stereo on the, the knob on the stereo is brown, as opposed to Honda, you know, the other one where it's it's like white, or it's purple or something. Okay, is that really the best way to compare two cars? The color of the radio knob? No, not necessarily. Okay, let's go back to this one. 
Okay, order and chaos. When you're organizing, you need to organize the way you present the information. The best way to do this is something called point by point. Okay, um, well, there's two different ways you can do it. You basically, you say everything about one thing and then the other. And then you have alternative, which is known as point by point. So basically, if you're going to compare apples and oranges, um, this one here, you tell me everything about an apple, and then you tell me everything about an orange. Okay, that's not as good as the alternate way, which is known as point by point, and I'll show you why. Okay, so again, if we're looking at apples and oranges here, apples and oranges, okay, the point by point would be, well, let's look at the three different ways we're looking at it, okay? They're different colors. Then we would talk about what colors the apple comes in and what color the orange comes in. See, this is we're comparing the apples and oranges using different colors. So then we say the apple comes in what? Green, red, yellow, or orange comes in well orange. Okay, so apple has more different colors. Okay, do people like to eat the skin or do people eat the skin? You know, first then you talk about apples and then you talk about oranges. Okay, yes, people eat the apple skin. No, people don't eat the skin of an orange. Okay, is it naturally broke up into sections? Well, apples, no, they're not, not really. B, yes, oranges, they are. So, you're you're talking about your, you know, when comparing apples and oranges, they're actually quite different because when you look at colors, whether they eat their skin, and if they're naturally broken up in sections. So that would be like our thesis. Um, and you can say, you know, they're actually more different than alike, and then you would use these different points here to again. But again, it's like you point then. To talk about the two things point, to talk about the two things point, to talk about the two things. That's called point by point. And that's what you'll be doing for this paper. Okay, now, when you do this, so as you're going from one to the other, use transition words. Uh, here's some examples. Um, by the way of contrast, this, that's, that's a good one. On the other hand, however, but, so you could say, an apple comes in the colors of yellow, green, and red. By way of contrast, the orange only comes in the color orange. Ta-da! See? Transition words. Fantastic. Use these. Okay, so the basic outline for a compare-contrast paper would look something like this. You have the introduction, which includes the thesis statement. Okay? You're introducing the topic and make sure you have the thesis statement. You have the point one. So in the introduction, again, if it's apples and oranges, you're talking about you know colors and sections and whether you eat the skin. The first point would be the colors. Second point would be whether or not people eat the skin. The third point would be whether or not they're broken up naturally into sections. And then you'd have a conclusion which wraps everything together. Now these three ones here that are kind of in a different color here, these are known as the body paragraphs. Body paragraphs. Body paragraphs. Um, just a quick note about the conclusion. Uh, a quick story about this. So I had a student who wrote a compare contrast paper. He was looking at whether he wanted to buy a Corvette or a BMW, and he was using, um, let's see, gas mileage, safety rating, and cost of insurance. And uh, in each case, the BMW BMW had a better safety rating. The BMW was going to cost less as far as insurance. The BMW had a, what did I say, a better safety rating and had better gas mileage, too. So as he's you know going through this, Basically, he's, he's making a case, and in his thesis, he didn't state which is better than the other. He says, I'm just going to look at these two things. And each of the points, he talk, basically, the BMW was the better car to get. In his conclusion, he said, in conclusion, you can clearly see that I'm going to be getting the Corvette, because it's a chick magnet. Okay, so he did not get a very good grade on his paper, because the conclusion did not match what was going on in here, and he didn't clearly state in the thesis what he was trying to compare contrast. So there's your lecture on compare contrast, and uh, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thanks.